This is Chippy with CarryPad.com and this is the Ava Morristown development platform. Um, Morristown is the phone capable platform from Intel with the an Atom inside. And this, <clears throat> we wanna try and avoid any confusion, is actually a development platform. This is not an end product. And I believe, I don't believe there's any plans to bring this to market. So you can actually buy it from Ava, but it uh, comes with development software and um, costs a lot more than your uh, standard smartphone would. It's possible that this device could be get picked up by a ODM and rebadged and sent to market, but uh, as it stands, this is really just a demonstrator, a prototype for the Intel Morristown platform. It allows developers to build applications and it allows the Migo team to develop the, their software, uh, their operating system. And that's the um, thing I wanna show you today because Migo 1.1 that's the developer edition, so really the first build of the operating system is on this, and uh, we can show you around a few things that are enabled on that. But um, let me quickly show you around the device first, because if you're thinking about buying one of these for development work, you'll need to know something about it. Um, so it's a capacitive touchscreen device with capacitive buttons uh, down the bottom. We've got a front-facing camera, light sensor, and I assume that's a, a proximity sensor. Then we've got the earpiece here. Um, down the bottom, we've got a microphone and a 3.5 mm headphone socket. And then here's the slide tray for your SIM card. And so there's one of the... Um, yeah, one of the reasons this isn't a re really going to be a, a phone, it's it's built for development work rather than uh, end users. And the same is here. If you go to the uh, micro SD card slot, it's uh, not sprung, spring loaded. It's, oh, it is spring loaded, he says, as he manages to get the SD card out. Mm, but you might need uh, something to get that fully out. Okay, so micro SD slot, micro USB port there. Battery unlock button here. We'll just pull the battery back off and um, it's not the easiest of battery backs to get off. There's the 3.5, uh, sorry, 3.7 volt, 5.5 uh, watt hour battery. About the same as most big smartphones. A couple of reasonably large speakers there that should provide a reasonable output. Got a um, probably a 3G antenna socket there, or maybe GPS. I'm not sure. Camera and LED flash down there. I'll leave the back off. Um, there's the power button, and on the other side, so really on the top, as you hold the device like this, we have a camera, and that is a two-stage camera button plus minus. That will be volume or zoom depending on how uh, what applications you're running. And then this, don't know, maybe a home button, maybe a lock button. Uh, it's not implemented in this current build of Migo, so uh, I don't know what that's for. Right, let's power on the device and uh, yeah, take you through uh, what I can of Migo 1.1. So before we go into uh, Migo 1.1, let me point out that um, yes, this is a prototype, a hardware platform, a development platform here. The software is also very early stage build of Migo 1.1 based on the Migo core operating system, but with the really the first iteration of the uh, user experience overlay that you'll see with uh, Migo uh, releases as we go forward. Now this is due for release in October, it's July now, so there's a lot of work still to be done on it, but you will get uh, an idea for the look and feel of the, uh, of the user experience um, that Migo are proposing here. Now, um, a lot of the applications in Migo 1.1 develop edition aren't um, built in yet. There's really no commercial software in here and there's not much that works at all but I can give you a demo of uh, the user experience um, and some of the features of the user experience. So we've got battery indicator, signal strength, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth indicator and uh, the clock up on the top right. Wi-Fi connected on this one right now. Doesn't seem to have a phone stack in it or 3G stack so I can't get uh, and he can't make a phone call, which is a shame. I'd like to have make a, made a phone call. 
Uh, middle button here brings up your application pane with a little indicator at the top to tell you there's actually two application panes we can move across one to the other and uh, that application pane also works in portrait mode as well which is nice to see so going through some of the applications and I'm only going to point to these I'm not actually going to start them up because well I'll start um, one of them up and show you exactly what happens this is a placeholder for the Migo Capra camera application and that happens with a lot of the applications so we'll dem at the end I'll demonstrate the ones that are working SMS clock and this is this is going to change obviously as time goes on SMS clock people um, chat application camera application pictures music videos maps and the app up center so this is an important little window and development uh, channel sorry application channel which will add features to the phone help calendar RSS reader stocks traders and uh, lock and fortune I'll show you the lock because that's um, we just go into lock you have to bring this little lock feature into the center of the picture to unlock the device so what apps have we got that are working I can show you the pictures application um, <coughs> excuse me fairly smooth um, picture application which allows you to swipe through uh, pictures some tear in the uh, transitions there which needs to be sorted out uh, and if you hold uh, down on one of the uh, pictures you should get a context sensitive menu actually if I go to all photos I think that's happens there view context sensitive menu no maybe not I believe there's a context sensitive menu and also auto rotates as well album support and there's no multi-touch on this but there is a zoom feature which looks like it's not currently implemented all right we're going to put that application to the back here and you'll see that's just dropped into the uh, to the window there and as you drop applications into the background they appear there on the window right let's go to um, the other application that's working or at least part working that's the people application that shows you your um, contacts and this will be able to be uh, synchronized with the online services of course then you've got shortcuts to your various letters and I believe you can search using the on-screen keyboard and it will allow you to search through so fairly standard people application. Let's just uh, go into that once again. I want to see if there's any context sen context uh, sensitive menus there. So if I click and hold, no, I'm not getting anything there. Oh yeah, the, well there's the detail, address, email, call, SMS, usual features. Right. So now we've got that in the background as well. So we've got two applications running there. And let's go to the other application that's working, we can give you a good uh, demo of this one. It's the browser, and this is Fennec or Mozilla, no, Firefox Mobile as it's called now. 1.1 uh, beta, I believe, so it's uh, still not uh, ready for full time. And this is slightly cut down as well. So the 1.1 you can get for MIMO now is a little bit more feature rich than the version we've got here. Um, Flash is installed, but it's not uh, working perfectly. Let's try and go to some. Um, let's try and go to some um, websites here. I'm going to do this in landscape mode because it's a better experience in landscape mode. Oh, and I actually need to start the application in landscape mode, otherwise it seems there's an error here, and it uh, actually crashes the browser if you. Uh, well, not crashes the browser, but it only shows half the, the screen. So I'm going to come out of this and restart the um, browser. There's the um, three applications running there. So let's um, I need to close this browser and then I'll restart it. 
Okay, starting the browser then in landscape mode, we're connected to Wi-Fi. As I said, no 3G available on this at the moment. And uh, the application takes a little while to start up. And we're going to go to the page. Oh, that was a double click. Let's just go to that page here. Carrypad.com is where I'm writing everything up for the um, Arva phone. Um, there's some pictures and some more articles there, so uh, check it out if you want some more information. Fairly quick to load, although it's not a progressive load, so what you see is pretty much everything at once. And um, you can double click to zoom into a column. And if it was implemented, these volume rocker buttons on the top would give you a progressive zoom, but they're not quite uh, implemented at the moment. Flash is running, but you can see. Uh, there's some bugs there because it's not uh, displaying correctly um, but uh, we can click through to various links and uh, browse around. I've tested out a number of websites including Google Docs and uh, Google Mail full JavaScript uh, edition and everything does seem to be working so the quality of the browser seems fairly good um, at the moment though there's some uh, speed and some UI issues which uh, need to be sorted out. Just moving um, to a second page here. Now if I go to um, some of the features of uh, Fennec we can browse to the right and get the tabs that are currently open. I've got two tabs open. I'm going to close one, two. Go back to the uh, home page. Then on the right, there's some features like settings, and you can add to favorites as well. Both of those windows, all those windows slide away when you move the window up, and uh, that seems to work pretty well. So let's pick out another bookmark here and quickly show you that. And that will probably round up the demo for. Uh, Amigo 1.1 developer edition until we get uh, a, uh, a newer version of it to test. So let's get rid of the uh, keyboard which tends to pop up when uh, not wanting, not wanted. There's a um, basic Fennec page there. Let's scroll down. I want to show you Google Docs so that that's working properly. So that's a fairly heavy JavaScript uh, page and it doesn't work very well. In fact, it doesn't work at all in the standard Android browser. So Google Docs, as I said, no progressive loading, which really does need to be fixed because you can start reading a page before it's fully loaded. But here we have um, full Google Docs desktop website. And it's not that you would use Google Docs on a device like this. This is really just to prove that the browser is uh, fully capable of supporting uh, a desktop style web experience. Okay, one more thing to show you on uh, this, and this is pretty much the only performance test we can do. It's the SunSpider JavaScript benchmark, and um, if you have a look carefully here, and I might be able to zoom in, um, we've got a figure of 4279 there. And that's 4.2 uh, seconds to do the uh, complete uh, SunSpider test. Now, how does that compare to other devices? Well, netbooks uh, run that test uh, at about the same rate, 4.2, 4.5, 4.7 seconds. So this gives an indication that the CPU, which is a 1.5 gigahertz uh, CPU, is, is performing close to what you find on a netbook. Um, compare it with some of the best smartphones out today and they are taking 10 seconds to get the same result so this is quite a significant indication that the C CPU is a lot faster on this device a lot more powerful on this device and if you look at something like this the Xperia X10 which I have that takes um, 29 seconds to do the Sun Spider test so this is uh, yeah, nearly 10 times as fast to do that test. Uh, that's a function of the browser, of the operating system, and of the um, platform itself, and it's only a small part of 
um, the performance of a web browser and the whole internet experience and user interface experience but it's a good CPU indication it's about the only one we can do on this uh, phone at the moment so um, let's just uh, summarize for you then Migo 1.1 on the um, <coughs> excuse me Ava um, development platform here running Intel Moorestown 1.5 uh, gigahertz uh, CPU. A little bit of an overview of uh, Migo 1.1 Developer Edition at this stage. Of course, there is a lot of work to be done and a lot of applications to be built. Um, so don't go downloading Migo 1.1 and putting it on your Nokia N900 just yet because you won't find many applications running and you won't even be able to make a phone call. Um, we're expecting this to be ready October 2010 which means products based on Migo 1.1 and Moorsdown, Moorsdown aren't likely to be out until early 2011, realistically. We might see tablets based on this, um, but again, that will have different uh, user experience and the same with uh, Netbook, which also has a different user experience. Right, so that's a quick overview there. Thanks for watching. My name's Chippy from carrypad.com. You can check out more about uh, tablets, uh, mobile devices, high-end smartphones uh, at carrypad.com and check out uh, some news about UMPCs and uh, more professional focused uh, mobile PCs at umpcportal.com. Thanks very much for watching.